some figures. Uh, you can see here the, the registration dossier submitted and the failure rate in pre-processing. So what we call pre-processing, in fact, is everything before the completeness check. And you can see here that um, on, the, on March 2010, which is the, sorry, it's a bit small in terms of uh, uh, figures, the, the, the last um, values for March 2010 uh, gives a number of dossiers of 312 submitted, and there is still 33% of dossiers failing in pre-processing, meaning virus, the, the format, and the business rule validation. One out of three, which can be considered as huge. So industry really has to, to get familiarized with this business rule and, and make sure that the format, the IT format is good because 33% is, is not acceptable and, and will uh, otherwise lead industry in major trouble. Um, here you can see the, the high number 402 in terms of dossier submitted. It, it, it is because of the Euclid 5.1 last month for submission. And, and this is why uh, there, is a, there has been a high increase here in the number of dossiers. Then another chart regarding the, the registration dossier accepted for processing, meaning after the business rule valu uh, um, validation, sorry, and the technical completeness check failure rate. And here you can see uh, very encouraging figures, meaning uh, from 2009 it was nearly, let's say, between 20 and, and 50 percent, and, and the last month for March 2010, there is three percent only of dossier being rejected in the technical completeness check step. So this is very encouraging, and you can see that no, the number of, of dossier uh, which was accepted was increasing. So keep in mind, and that was why I would like to, to really highlight the TCC step as you have no, let's say, the tool available as Euclid 5 plugin, it's easy to run it in-house and to make sure that you correct your dossier before submitting it. The business rules, well, you can see still 33% of failure, and this is something to really highlight. And uh, fortunately, I've got a specific slide for it, so you can have some solutions. Um, Make sure you're familiar uh, with the manual, and, and this is available at the ECA website. Uh, CEFIC is also working on, on some tips to overcome the business rule. There is a, a dossier preparation task force working closely with ECA to make sure that uh, industry learns and, and uh, is up to date in terms of uh, uh, dossier quality. And still something to highlight, don't forget confidentiality claims when you build a dossier. It won't be after you submit your dossier that you have to consider it. It's when you create your Euclid 5 to say, well, do I want this information to be considered as confidential, yes or no? It won't be time after, it must be considered now. And sometimes it's, it's forgotten when you build a Euclid 5 and make the robust list summaries and so on. Regarding the completeness check, well, use the TCC plugin for verification before submitting, and now the, the latest version on Euclid 5.2 has been released. And regarding the financial check, again, uh, make sure you have a fast payment procedure, and something important to, to uh, know as well, ECA decided earlier this year only to make e-invoices, electronic invoices, so you will not receive any more paper copies. You will receive an invoice in your Rich IT message box, and then it's up to you to check after you submitted your dossier that um, you make sure you pay uh, in time for your dossier to be um, accepted. Okay, I hope I didn't lose anybody, <laughs> even if it's the beginning of the presentation. Um, here, uh, when I see your agenda, I can see that the use descriptors and the uh, environmental uh, workers uh, assessment is something you will uh, focus on this afternoon or later in the day. I will still give uh, some overview there and, and, and reminder. So the, the content of the registration dossier, you, I think, are more or less aware that when you have to register a substance on the reach, you first have to create what is called a technical dossier uh, in the Euclid 5 format. 
I won't go here uh, in the different points that need to be uh, put in this technical dossier. Um, but if you are uh, in uh, tonnage band above 10 tons per year, you also have to provide a chemical safety report with the hazard and PBT assessment. And if uh, after this uh, hazard and PBT assessment, uh, you discover that your substance is hazardous, sorry, it's not dangerous, it's hazardous, uh, or PBT VPVB, you have to make uh, the exposure assessment with the expert scenarios, expert estimation, and to make the risk characterization. Of course, you know that you cannot submit your dossier or put on the market uh, substances for which you have not an acceptable risk for the use. If you have uh, a risk characterization ratio which is above one, well, you have to implement new risk management measures or change your operating conditions, but you must make sure that your dossier shows that your risk is acceptable both for environment and for uh, workers and, and consumers. Uh, I don't know if you know this slide, uh, it's a bit complex, I will try to spend some time on it. Um, and it's somewhat little as characters, sorry for this. So in fact, there are uh, two parts. Uh, the right um, part is more for the communication with the downstream users, and the left part is more for what occurs in industry. So the, the very first uh, thing is to determine the strategy, meaning with the manufacturers, importers, and manufacturers, importers, downstream, downstream user association, with possibly a systematic assessment of safe use, tier one, two, and if it goes well, then you can directly go to the final expert scenario because your risk is acceptable. Uh, you have to map the users and the use condition in the supply chain, and this can be a challenge, perhaps not in your specific sector of uh, plant protection product, but in some other sectors it may be. And uh, in fact, um, we, we recommend that some initial expert scenarios, the titles of these expert scenarios and the use descriptors are uh, prepared at uh, that step. And as soon as possible, in theory, the manufacturer and importer should communicate the users to the direct downstream user for further communication in the supply chain. As you all know, communication in reach is key, and good communication, efficient communication, clear communication. As far as I'm concerned, I'm always astonished at the language problems, the, the, the knowledge of the understanding, the, the, the field of expertise of the uh, uh, persons we discuss to, we, we need to always assess what to communicate, how to communicate, because the expertise is, can be different and, and the, the backgrounds are different as well. Um, so, and then the, the two processes go in parallel, meaning the, the right part and the left part. Uh, in industry, there are two routes here, and I will uh, describe that uh, in the, the next uh, slide, is Either you choose the generic expert scenario development route, um, and, and this is more uh, with the man, uh, manufacturers, importers, and downstream user partnership via trade associations, so in order to try and streamline the communication. Or you can have what is called the specific exp exposure scenario development with selected downstream users and, and to try to, to get very specific information on specific users. Um, then, after some communication as well, uh, when the risk, uh, when the expert scenario is, is uh, well defined, uh, when the uh, risk assessment is okay, meaning uh, the risk is acceptable, you can document your final expert scenario, finally. Um, going to the right part of, of the slide, um, when the manufacturers, importers, mean, or the ORs, uh, the one who have to register uh, have uh, communicated the users to the downstream user, then the question from the downstream user is, is my use covered? Major question. <laughs> um, if yes, well, CEFIC recommends that uh, the downstream user just wait for the final expert scenario. Well, if necessary, there could be some further interaction, but otherwise, if it is covered in the initial mapping, then good. If not, then two possibilities. Either the downstream user could complete a feedback form or and await for the decision, or the downstream user could 
possibly as well prepare this, the chemical safety assessment, the chemical safety report, and inform the agency. And especially if some users are confidential and you don't want to display it uh, to your uh, supplier. So this is again an option. And in theory, um, after the final expert scenarios um, are uh, prepared, then there, are the, the, there is the important step of communicating these expert scenarios uh, in, uh, to the direct downstream user and, and with the distribution of the extended safety data sheet. So again, a lot of communication, uh, technical communication, and, and of course our legal uh, requirements behind. So uh, this is one of the, the most difficult aspect of which I, I feel. So in few words, first determine strategy and collect information. Then what is called use alignment, it's between the, the manufacturers and importers or the supplier of the substance and the downstream user. It's just to make sure that uh, we understand the same way the use of the substance. This is what we call the use alignment and then we speak about use descriptors and so on, just to make sure that we, we understand each other and, and it is not always easy because of the way of interpretation of the guidance. The several aspects can, can occur here. And then, of course, the expert scenario development, but I think this is something that uh, will be addressed this afternoon or later by uh, uh, my two colleagues here. And final step, the expert scenario communication. Just uh, for the registrants and, and for the expert scenario development, there are two specific approaches uh, defined by CEFIC uh, and others. The, the generic expert scenario approach and the specific one. So here you have the main focus. So if it is generic, it's more between partnership via trade associations. It's, it's on some common uses, well-known use, state-of-the-art news, uh, uses uh, for dispersive application. And, and we assume here that there is some knowledge of the substances handling by manufacturer importer, meaning the manufacturers, importers can already start the work. And so they don't need uh, a, a huge input uh, from the uh, downstream users. Uh, and for the generic uh, route, uh, it should be developed for groups of substances with similar applications, for example, solvents. This is the <laughs> very well known and, and uh, used um, group. For specific expert scenario, well, it, it's more uh, a single, let's say, manufacturer importer and downstream user key customer interaction. So it's a one-to-one -one discussion in terms, in, instead of, let's say, downstream user with consortium. So there are two different uh, communication uh, aspects there. Um, the specific expert scenario is more for specialized uses, and it's better uh, when there is a limited supply chain communication, because otherwise it can be very tricky to uh, cascade the communication to the end user. Um, we expect that the manufacturer and importer here have limited knowledge of the substance handling in the supply chain and, and couldn't start the work uh, on its own. And in fact, uh, the specific expert scenario is more for single substance with specific uh, or general applications, but for single substance. Again, the, the generic expert scenario approach is a first step because when the registrant will have to document its own expert scenario and CSR, it will have to, um, let's say, uh, make sure that this generic becomes specific to his way of handling and to he, uh, his downstream user uh, risk management measures and operational conditions. So generic is a first step, and normally there is some refinement for getting a specific for the registrant and the downstream user. 